What's going on, guys? It's Danny from Fantasy Stock Exchange here. And today, I'll be going through my top waiver wire pickups entering week three of fantasy football. 10 players total that you can pick up to boost your squad going into week three. Hopefully, you guys are 2-0, and oh, and hopefully you won in week two. But if you guys didn't, I'll be outlining five main players and five honorable mentions that can help you get the dub in week three. But either way, before we get into the video, if you guys enjoy content like this and are interested in seeing more, make sure you leave a like down below. Comment your favorite waiver wire pickup of the week and subscribe to the channel. Currently just past 15,000 subscribers. Next milestone being 20,000. Appreciate you guys for the continued support. But with that being said, as always, let's hit the intro. All right, before I get into the main 10 players of the video, just want to quickly mention that these guys should probably be rostered in your league, but if they are not, I'm going to quickly make reference to a few players being Jahan Dotson and Curtis Samuel of the Washington Commanders, currently owned in 43% and 70% of Yahoo leagues, but if they are available on your wire, make sure you go pick them up. Kenneth Walker, running back at the Seattle Seahawks, owned in 59% of Yahoo leagues. But again, as always, if he's available on your wire, make sure you go pick up Kenneth Walker for the long-term projection, for the long-term outlook that he can bring to that Seattle backfield. And then finally, playing tonight, I'm recording this on Monday midday. Playing tonight is going to be Traylon Burks, wide receiver of the Tennessee Titans. If he has a bad game, if somebody gets frustrated, you know, decides to drop him for some reason, make sure you go pick up Traylon Burks of the Tennessee Titans. But adding to that, a few other guys you should be watching for on Monday Night Football will be Alexander Madison of the Minnesota Vikings. Obviously, if anything happens to Dalvin Cook, he would become by far the number one waiver wire pickup of the week if he's available in your league. James Cook, rookie running back of the Buffalo Bills. I'm really interested to see his potential involvement in this game going up against the Tennessee Titans. Maybe they go up early. Maybe he gets into the game. We have yet to see that. And then finally, Kenneth Gainwell of the Philadelphia Eagles. Obviously, we know that Miles Sanders is the lead back, but we did see this past week Kenneth Gainwell actually chip into that share. So I'm very interested to see how Kenneth Gainwell continues to chip, continues to get playing time for the Philadelphia Eagles. But let's go on to the number one waiver wire pickup of the week, the guy that you should be spending all of your fab on if he is available in your league. Garrett Wilson, wide receiver of the New York Jets, rostered in 23% of Yahoo leagues. And we've seen this guy get off to an electric start to start his career. 22 targets in his first two career games, despite only a 49% and 61% snap share in each of the last two weeks. And despite these low snap shares, he still posted over a 21% target share and a 30.6% target rate in those first two games of his career. He's just looked phenomenal despite that low snap share. And as we know from rookie receivers in particular, if they look good in limited sample size, it's more than likely that their team's going to recognize this and they're going to get more opportunity in the long run. The New York Jets aren't stupid. They're seeing what Garrett Wilson's doing on the limited snap share. It won't take long before he supersedes Corey Davis in two wide receiver sets to pair with Elijah Moore. And with what he's doing on limited snap share right now, I wouldn't be shocked if we're talking about potentially this year's T. Higgins or this year's C.D. Lamb coming from Garrett Wilson. He's got the talent level. Obviously, the draft capital is there. And there's a prime opportunity working beside Elijah Moore to potentially dominate the target share, especially when Zach Wilson comes back to potentially take this offense to the next level. So Garrett Wilson, I don't care what fab you have. I'm willing to spend all of it. But of course, if you don't have to spend all of it, gauge what your league market is at. And depending on what your league mates are willing to spend, you can adjust your fab bid accordingly. But I have no problem bidding the house on Garrett Wilson. Next guy up, number two waiver wire pickup of the week is going to be Raheem Mostert, running back of the Miami Dolphins, rostered in 43% of Yahoo Fantasy Leagues. And we saw this past week that Raheem Mostert usurped Chase Edmonds in the pecking order for touches out of the Dolphins' backfield. And it looked like Mostert's going to operate as that main early down back and operate that goal line role for a Mike McDaniel offense that to put it simply the Miami Dolphins look like one of the best up and coming offenses in the league absolutely blowing out the Baltimore Ravens in the second half if we're getting exposure to the goal line situations for an offense that we think is going to score a lot Raheem Moser is going to hold a lot of value I have no problem projecting them at a top 35 level given the fact that again I expect this team to score a lot. And if we're getting the goal line opportunities for, you know, one or two touchdowns from Raheem Mostert, I think he's going to be able to chip in tremendously. And you guys would have already saw the chart on the screen, but goal line opportunity all went to Mostert. Early down opportunity went to Mostert. And the overall plays was pretty much split between him and Chase Edmonds. So no problem bidding a decent chunk on Raheem Mostert, expecting this to continue. In terms of fab, maybe 20, 25, 30%, whatever it takes to get Raheem Mostert. Cause I think, especially if you're in a fragile running back build, avoid running backs early, he can provide you running back two, three type of production for the foreseeable future. 
Number three waiver wire pickup of the week is going to be Michael Gallup, wide receiver of my beloved Dallas Cowboys. You guys see the jerseys hanging in the background. And with Michael Gallup, 27% ownership in Yahoo Leagues, we've gotten full status report from Stephen Jones himself that he expects Michael Gallup to be able to return this week, Monday Night Football against the New York Giants. Now, I will advise if you do pick up Michael Gallup, I would at least want to wait a week, see what he does on Monday night prior to plugging him into my lineup. But when it comes to Michael Gallup, as soon as he returns, as soon as he's fully healthy and ready to play for the Cowboys, I think he should fill in as a wide receiver 3-4 type in fantasy. And yet, he's available in 73% of leagues. We all know that CeeDee Lamb is going to be the target hog of this offense, a 30.1% target share thus far in their first two games. But given the status of this receiving core, you know, after CeeDee Lamb, we're talking about Dennis Houston, Noah Brown, you know, James Washington when he gets back, maybe. Michael Gallup has a clear opportunity to reestablish himself as the clear-cut number two weapon in this offense. And Dak Prescott clearly has trusted them. This is a player that before CeeDee Lamb got there prior when he was still split in the field with Amari Cooper, we saw him break out as a second-year receiver. That talent is still there. He's still going to operate as the big threat, vertical threat for a Dak Prescott-led Cowboys offense that we expect to take a big step up in the next few weeks. So with Michael Gallup, he's an extremely good player. And I think a wide receiver two C Ceiling is in store when Prescott returns to play. The fact that he's available in 73% of Yahoo leagues makes me think that he can be had for a very cheap fad bid. You know, maybe you only have to bid five, 10 bucks to get Michael Gallup, but I think he could be a long term flex play for your lineups. Another play that I think is perfect, especially in PPR formats, my number four waiver wire pickup of the week is going to be Jacoby Myers, wide receiver of the New England Patriots, 35% roster ship on Yahoo Fantasy. And we've seen this guy be the engine of the New England Patriots offense thus far. 19 targets in the first two games, 29.2% target share. And as I said, he can fill a Jarvis Landry-like projection on this New England offense. And maybe you're losing Mike Evans for his suspension or Jerry Judy who might miss a week. I think Jacoby Myers can fill into your flex spot and you can expect top 45 level production with a potential top 30 ceiling given the target share he has on this Pats offense. And finally, number five, my main pickups of the week is going to be Sterling Shepard of the New York Giants. And so far, thus far, he's looked like that Giants wide receiver one and especially with the uncertainty around Kadarius Tony in terms of playing time and Kenny Galday in terms of playing time it could be that way for a while we saw this past week week two after his Achilles tear he suffered last season second game he's played after that tear a 91% route participation and a 32.3% target share and I know I get it he's a boring option you don't want to go bid up. You don't want to go, you know, spend on Sterling Shepard. But I do think that if he's as healthy as he looked in week two, he can give you a baseline of about top 40, maybe top 35 level production. And obviously we know the ceiling is what he was able to do at the start of last year prior to his injury. So love Sterling Shepard. Now let's get onto the honorable mentions, which I am going to spit off rapid fire. And the first one would have been Tyrion Davis Price of the San Francisco 49ers, but we actually got recent news that he did suffer a high ankle sprain and is expected to miss the next few weeks. Next man up, it's going to be Jordan Mason running back from the San Francisco 49ers. TDP saw a lot of mop-up work in relief for Jeff Wilson, and with TDP expected out, there's now an opening to operate as the number two in this offense with Mitchell on the men for the next two months and with TDP expected to miss the few weeks. We did see TDP had a near split with Jeff Wilson on the goal line. I do expect that Jeff Wilson will be the back to own here, maybe an 18 to 20 opportunity per game type of back and what I expect to still be a run heavy offense. But with TDP hurt, and obviously we know Jeff Wilson's durability concerns as an older back, Jordan Mason is set to be the next man in line. So, so if you can get him now when he's super cheap prior to maybe week four or week five, five waivers if Jeff Wilson goes down and you're going to have to spend $40 of your fab. I'd much rather stash him now for 0% of my fab than spend a boatload later down in the road. Next up in the honorable mentions is going to be Daryl Williams of the Arizona Cardinals and Eno Benjamin of the Arizona Cardinals. We saw this past week that Eno looks to be the two when Connor is healthy, but if Connor misses time, Darrell looked like he's going to make this a 50-50 type of committee with Daryl Williams getting the goal line work. All eight of the Arizona Cardinals snaps in the goal line area went to Darrell Williams once James Conner got hurt. So I do think if Conner's banged up or if he doesn't play this week or Conner's volatile could lead to further injuries, I think Darrell Williams will be the back to own out of this Arizona Cardinals offense that I do expect to take a step up following that dramatic overtime victory over the Las Vegas Raiders. Next up is going to be Tyler Algier, running back of the Atlanta Falcons. We did see this past week. He saw 10 carries working in relief of Cordell Patterson in his first career game after being inactive in week one. 
as we know with a rookie running back, especially one myself and Corey both thought was very talented coming out of the cycle, he could see a potential role increase as the season rolls along. And he's a between the tackles grinder that really complements Patterson's skill set very well. And as we know with Cordero Patterson, prior to last year and prior to the first two games of this season, he's never been asked to have this huge workload. And I do think that the Atlanta Falcons are cognizant of that and are going to be able to work Tyler Algier in as the season goes along. He's a stash right now. You can't put him in your lineup. You can't expect him to, you know, go out there and put up 10 to 15 points, RB2, RB3 type of production. But he's a player that if Atlanta moves Cordero Patterson to more so a ancillary 8 to 12 touch per game type of role, Algier can be, you know, I don't want to say James Robinson, but that would be the archetype of player I think Tyler Algier can play from a role standpoint. Honorable mention is going to be Mark Ingram running back of the New Orleans Saints. And again, I am, am assuming that Alvin Kamara is going to return from that rib cartilage injury that held him out of week two. But if he's not back for this next upcoming game for the New Orleans Saints going up against Carolina Panthers, Ingram's going to be a top 30-ish level option at the running back position. We did see this past week when Kamara missed. He handled all of the early down work and all of the short yardage work for New Orleans while Tony Jones handled that passing down work so far this year it looks like the saints are going to be a much better team than the carolina panthers so i do expect a positive game script where if alvin Kamara miss there could be an opportunity for mark ingram getting you know 15 20 touches in this game with obvious goal line opportunity and if that's the case he could provide top 20 level production at his ceiling in this matchup against carolina but either way hopefully these 10 players help you fill out your lineups appreciate you guys for making it this far in the video stay tuned later today i'm going to be dropping my, my top streamers going into week three of fantasy football your quarterbacks, your tight ends, and your defenses that if you punted the position early in your drafts can get you through your upcoming matchup this week. But either way, I appreciate you guys. Peace out. Enjoy your Tuesday. Why, why are you